it was our second play that we wrote, or in some way it was our third, because we had made a play together called Voyage to Lesbos, and we um, nearly killed each other. Um, and then we remade that play. We rewrote that play. Then, even though Gluttons it was a, just a weird, stressful paranoia factory that first go round, but we decided that we would become a company and make another play. And then um, Brave Smiles was so fun to make. We had so much mm. fun. Well, like, what was like the seed? Like what started us on that? Well, I would say like at the time there was a, a it felt like a shortage of lesbian uh, narratives. And so part of what we were doing, like it was back in the day where there was a kiss on law and order and everything in the Lower East Side stopped because all the lesbians ran to whoever had a television and watched to watch the kiss. And it only happened live. You couldn't, you couldn't see it over and over again. You saw it once. It was brief. And, it, and so I think we were dealing with what is the shortage of lesbian narratives and what is the history of lesbian narratives. So we just assaulted ourselves with every kind of um, input we could get, like Machen in uniform. And we were just trying to come up with why is the lesbian narrative always that the lesbian dies at the end? And so every reference we could find, the well of loneliness and Machen in uniform. And um, I mean, I'm sure there's many that I'm forgetting, but last we, summer at Bluefish Cove. Last summer at Bru Bluefish Cove, we just inundated ourselves with um, those pieces and then started writing from that, as I recall. Yeah, I mean, I think that was really the thing that in every single uh, narrative about a lesbian, the lesbian has to die. Mm -hmm. And Sadly. also that lesbians are not funny, that lesbians are like so busy trying to get their story across. Um, Mo is showing you a list of all of the um, influences oh, right. on us, like the Children's Hour and um, Julia. Uh, please, and yeah, and, uh, and that, you know, it, it, well, I remember when we started writing it, we, we were all wondering like, um, is this too simple? Like, is this, is this like enough? Is it, and it is, it is. Cause it's just, it's just going over and over that ground of like the sorry, sad lives. And then of course, every, every time it looks like they're, they're going to make it and um, be able to have a fruitful life and be uh, in love and happy and accepted. It falls apart. I think the thing that I really saw in it when, when, uh, you know, when it was done, it we uh, the three of us who live on the East Coast went to see the amazing Pride Plays reading <clears throat> last year uh, with just an incredible uh, company of actors. Um, and I hadn't revisited it for a long time. They did such a good job. We stole it back and decided to do it ourselves this year. But um, uh, I think you know, I think the thing that was so amazing about being at the Wow Cafe Theater, which is where we all met, this lesbian theater collective, which still exists in the East Village, um, was that there was, um, <clears throat> the assumption was that the world was a lesbian world. It was an amazing place to really learn to be out in the world in a lesbian context. <clears throat> so that it's in the play, like we're, we're you know, making fun of that trope that the lesbian has to die but within the the speeches within the way that th these characters deal with each other the um centrality of a lesbian perspective where you know frau von pussenheimer is you know in in her you know sort of monologues of rage and grief and and miss phillips talking about uh you know the attitude is what you want is pleasure for girls bodies and to and to you know just sweep the patriarchy away and that's dealt with in a funny way but the there's a there's this um you know sort of radically lesbian central perspective um in the work that i think is what uh you know when i when when we saw it last year i was like oh this still has so much uh currency and relevance in it and i think i think it's because of i think it's because of that it's not standing outside saying please please let us in please please see us 
it 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 presumes our uh, you know sort of human centrality in the world. One thing that we took in our approach to um, to creating work was that even though we were pretty campy and um, definitely satirists, um, and we were influenced by um, you know people like the ridiculous theatrical company who were very very high camp and satire. Um, Split Bridges. Yeah. Um, but I feel like even Split Bridges had more, you know, poignancy or whatever, trying to actually talk about something um, more emotional, I guess. And so that was something we always tried to do was, was have a mixture of those two approaches where we were trying to be very funny and trying to, and you know, loved the camp elements. Um, but there was always some kind of line that we all five pretty much seemed to know what that line was. Although sometimes we had discussions about, did we cross it? Do we want to bring it back a little bit? We have a great director, Lee Silverman and tech people, Nick Corey. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they are creating magic on, um, what's it called? Stream, Stream yard. Stream yard. But it's, um, and so we, you know, when we're not in a scene, we're not on the screen and, but StreamYard runs with a mirrored whatever thing. So we have to do everything backwards. And so that's the biggest struggle. It's hard on the old ladies. Oh my God, the old ladies. I got notes, <laughs> notes and notes on my notes. Go left, <laughs> no, go right. Oh, she's over there. Don't slap her that way. Ooh. <laughs> I think the first time we we rehearsed it, um, I was, you know, I had felt a, excited about it, but a little bit of trepidation. And the performances are so, we we did it so many times. We haven't done it in a long time, but we did it so many times. And the performances are just like in our DNA. And uh, I have to say, the performances of my brothers are so delightful and extraordinary. And seeing them close up is so amazing. And that really reads, and I, I, you know, the, the, you know, one of the things I think that's in our work and in this work is just like a love of the most basic kind of theater, uh, just like scrappy, let's make a show, genre-based theater. Um, and it, we, you know, as much as we were interested in, you know, images of lesbians and lesbian narratives, we love a dumb joke, we love a dumb accent, we love a stupid costume. And uh, it turns out those kind of dumb theater tropes work, you know, you can really uh, work them in the little box. So we're going for that. <laughs> also, I would add that the WOW Cafe Theater was a sweat equity based enterprise that had no artistic director, no money. So that all those um, limitations or freedoms, however, which way you want to look at it, lended themselves to this type of, um, oh, we can just use this and oh, we'll just mime that. And, um, and we, can, we can fail because there's nobody who's going to say, um, you're never going to work here again because your play sucked. It's like, okay, your play this year sucked, but okay, what, how much time do you want next year? <laughs> well, I wonder, I mean, I don't know how audiences are going to react, and I, and I won't know because they're not going to be with us when we perform, which is the major limitation of uh, online streaming, online theater. But um, I am curious to know, I mean, the world has changed so much since 1992, and I wonder what a young queer person, how they will respond to this play. I mean, they still perform it sometimes and Absolutely. like it, so so it's, I think it is still relevant, but uh, it's, it's also just, it's just a funny fucking play, excuse me, and, um, <laughs> And, you know, I think it, as Lisa had said, it really does celebrate um, lesbian, um, lesbians. <laughs> it celebrates <laughs> all things lesbian. I, when we saw it, when we saw it this last year, I was like, this play is fresh as a daisy. I mean, people were, <laughs> people were, I, I was really surprised. I, mean, LOL, I don't know, LOL. maybe we can, maybe we can send it, you know, backwards with our, with our production, but uh that we're about to do, but I, I don't know. I think it's, it's got a lot, you know, sexism isn't 
over. Lesbian invisibility is changed, but you know, as a component of misogyny, it's you know still there. And mm -hmm. um, I don't know. The three of us, uh, Mo and Lisa, and I saw the reading last year, the Pride play. And I don't know about you two, but I um, walked in there like not knowing, like, is this going to be, you know, uh, squirmy or like, am I, is this the play going to hold up, like Lisa said, but no. And we were embarrassed because we were laughing so hard. And so <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Snorting and like, we were like, who wrote this? It's hilarious. <laughs> like, rain it in, rain it in, brothers. I do but, think yeah. I do think that'll be one of the most challenging parts of this performance is not laughing, like uh, because I, I, it really is the foundation of our work is that we love to, you know, harp on a stupid joke and we love to make each other laugh. And um, we have been known over the past how many years um, to quote this play often to each other to our families to our wives to yes. our we um it, we we use the quotes all the time in real life irl we've been a company for over 30 years brothers that's 31 years yeah spanning the centuries brothers centuries okay <laughs> right right crazy so and then please chime in everyone but uh, we were doing Voyage to Lesbos, our first play. I'm using scare qu quotes there. Our first <laughs> theatrical play like theater. object. Our, mm -hmm. Yes, our performance piece. And we were horsing around uh, at a warm up, like before the show. We we're doing a little warm up together. And we were sort of goofing that we were in a um, family circus troupe. <laughs> uh, like the flying Karamazov brothers or something like that. And uh, d does anyone remember who said it? The five lesbian brothers? I don't. I don't remember it that way. I remember that Dominique drew a cartoon of us together at, because we were talking about the, I don't know. We, There's a children's book called the five, it's right. racist, don't read it, called the five Chinese brothers. But I grew up hearing you know how, looking at that book and I, I feel like somehow that was an inspiration for you, the structure of the name and yeah, yeah and I drew I drew the program that had like you know little cartoon characters of us and it oh. seemed it seemed like it went together yeah and, and you wrote you wrote the five lesbian brothers underneath it and like oh, why don't we call ourselves the five lesbian brothers and it really has served us I want to say I feel like a lot of the like the way we were taken up if we had called ourselves the Sapphic Sisters, it wouldn't have happened. That there was a way that we like put this little bit of, you know, gave ourselves a little bit of a, a patriarchal lift by using the word. Um, totally brothers. intentional. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I think the paradox in the name also is, is very engaging. It served us very, very well. Yes, and one of our, one of our hallmarks is also gender play. I mean, we've always uh, done drag back and forth. And, um, and so calling ourselves brothers, lesbian brothers, and the irony of that and the, you know, the juxtaposition made sense. It was always really fun back in the day, too, because it made people say the word lesbian, which they <laughs> were so, so uncomfortable with. And one of my favorite moments was going to the um, Simon and Schuster, is that who made our book? and um, checking in at reception and we're like, we're the five lesbian brothers. And the girl is like, picks up the phone and she's like, um, there's five. Like she didn't <laughs> want to say the word lesbian. And because is that insulting? I don't want to insult you. <laughs> and same thing happened at Disneyland when we all tried to get mouse get ears that said five lesbian brothers on it. Um, it was this little beautiful like gay guy working in the shop and he was, we're like, can you write five lesbian brothers? And he was like, um, let me check with my boss. <laughs> so he runs back and then he comes out and he's like, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't do that. He said, it's derogatory. <laughs> derogatory. It would oh, yeah. be derogatory. Yeah. And so, and so um, the world has changed a little in that way. A little, but we've been talking about how um, a lot of younger, um, you know, new, new queer people, women, <laughs> don't like reject the word lesbian and um you know they have their various reasons for it which makes sense but somewhere behind it i i think it still has to do with the fact that i think 
because of societal structuring, lesbian on the tongue sounds like <laughs> some kind of disease or but can, can, like, tasty but treat. can lesbian on the tongue be the title of our next <laughs> well, a tasty treat. I love it. Well also that's how the that's how the soup is made, Dan. Yeah. That's how it happens. Yeah. Oh yeah, just that fast. Also, <laughs> just to say that um, here, here uh, I n n know a young queer uh, woman who's like, I'm not queer, I'm a lesbian. So she's oh, very right. cool. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's at the bless. forefront of the four. The four. deep les, the deep les. <laughs> <laughs>